Hello, this is Adrian from my channel Random Drop, and we're back in Swotor. I am now in the Knights of the Fallen Empire expansion, and I've played probably like one to two hours of it, and it's really fucking cool. Um, it feels just like a single player game so far, and it, it feels great. It's so. Man, I just want another KOTOR game. But yeah, right now we're going through the story with some recognizable characters. Uh, some time has passed. I've been frozen for like five years. Uh, I don't know where all my companions are at or anything. It basically changes the game. Before you start it, they're like, hey, you're going to lose everything. Y your companions will significantly change. You won't have access to a lot of this stuff. Like where you're going you can't go back and there's a pretty cool moment of being like oh shit they're gonna throw out a lot of shit which most MMOs don't they just keep on stacking it up and it was nice to see like man delete this shit let's let's start a clean slate this let's let's make this the actual like KOTOR game we wanted and so far it feels like it could be its own thing so what happened is the Emperor has finally shown up after hundreds of years, if not thousands, and he's created this whole other society, like this his perfect society. And basically, they're they've taken over. They've wiped out the Republic and made them bend the knee and whatnot. And you're kind of just waking up to all this, being like, "Yo, what happened?" And people come save you and whatnot. And, we crash landed in the swamp, and we're kind of just still figuring out what's happening. Uh, all new cast of characters, HK-55, um, a lot like 51 from KOTOR, and he's in, 51 is in this game too, I think. But yeah, meat, he says meat bags a lot, and it's pretty great. Um, he's a murder machine. But yeah, right now me and him have to travel to this area to figure out what the hell's going on. Um, yeah, it feels great, like, I wish the main game was more set up like this. The fact that they don't have to focus on so many, they could just focus on one story and make it really great and have multiple ways of playing it, you know, it could be any other class, but I feel like they could build on that so much faster rather than how the game was initially built, where... Each class had its own quest, but at a certain point, they were kind of just like, Hey, run over here and kill a dude, man. Like, I don't know. Like, we're all gonna go through the same zones. It's gonna be re real weird. Uh, how it was all set up was kind of crazy. And you could eventually, like, after... When you first started playing the game, for 10 hours, you like, you, 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 the magic is on, right? It's working. Like, yeah, this story's great and whatnot, but hour 20 in you're like I know exactly how this is gonna play out I'm gonna show up to this planet I'm gonna do my story quests and then I'm gonna do all these side quests and then I'm going to go to the next planet and yeah like and some classes did it better than others and whatnot but you know you kind of saw how it played out and now like this doing this like single player like I have no idea what planet I'm on where I'm at where I'm going like, it's pretty fucking cool. Like, I don't even know if I could get back to the Imperial ship or anything. Like, my character is locked. It feels like it's locked down in this area, which is pretty cool. And see, so like, we're still doing like the same stuff. Uh, there's been a lot more like character banter as you're roaming around and whatnot, where like. Your companions are actually talking to each other over radio and stuff, which is it's a nice touch. Um, definitely missing from the base game for sure. Like my main complaint really is that it's just the fucking. It still had it's still that part where it's an MMO. You're kind of sad, like, fuck, man, like, if this was, like, the actual single-player thing I wanted, that would have been great. And I'm chapter four into this, and it seems like it's going pretty fast. I hope, hope there's a lot more to it. Hopefully I just don't blow through it. 
Um, I'd say, I would hope I'm like a fourth through the story, but I don't know how many chapters there are. The story area. You act more like a bodyguard than an assassin. See, like actual banter. Your primary function. Confirmation. It is a very difficult task indeed. That I've kept masters Benico and Portena alive, despite their high risk activities, is my greatest achievement. The two of them seem close. Deflection. I am not programmed to assess or discuss the emotional matters of meat bags under my protection. <laughs> of meat bags under my protection. Assurance. Your protection is my top priority, Master. Like, yeah, that stuff is great. Like, that was not... None of the companions really did that in the original game. They never just sat there and fucking talked to you. Might need to sell some shit, man. Sell junk. Got a lot... A lot of shit, and half of this I don't even think I need. I kind of want some of it for the looks. I do need that. I need to equip that. See, that's not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the shitty one. Put that there. MMO inventory management, so amazing. Uh, don't like how that looks. No, no, no. All right, let's just move on. Like we're not, we're not gonna sit here and do that. Like it'd be nice if you had could have one more party member, you know. And the fights could be a little bit more difficult, because right now they're super easy, obviously. There's not a whole bunch to them, because it's still like that MMO combat, you know? There's like, not much you can really do with this. Looks like I gotta cross the swamp. With more of these fuckers. Achieve deadness. Look at that guy. Defeat the swamp rancor? Alright. But yeah, it's, it's pretty cool so far. Witness your skills first hand, Master. Master? Clarification. Master Benico altered my programming before we secured your release. I am to serve you with the same unexcelled loyalty with which I serve her. In fact, your survival is now my highest priority. <laughs> Not the easiest job. This prison was only my latest misadventure. You'll have your work cut out for you. Flattery. The skills you have demonstrated thus far, coupled with the stories told by Master Benico, suggest that you are quite adept at ensuring you your own survival. Enthusiasm. I look forward to eliminating any opponent foolish enough to attempt your murder regardless. Resumption. Shall we continue? Hell yeah! Yeah, I really like that character. Like, of all, I like. He's pretty much the same copy paste of the character in Kotor. That it's just a fucking hilarious murder bot. <laughs> this is murder bot do what murder bot do. He just talks about murder and just doesn't give a shit. Like, it's pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, like this. One, I'm overleveled because I'm 65 already. I've been 65 for a while. But two, like this, this stuff isn't that hard. It's 
it's not it's not difficult at all because it's an MMO. I mean, this is how it's gonna be. Uh, which is disappointing. But it just makes me think if they like had set up this game more like to be like a Destiny or something like that, where you have your own. Everyone has that same story. You can come from like a different class or whatever. But eventually, like everyone has the same story, right? You're either Sith, you're Jedi, but you're going through this main plot at once. Um, and you're kind of just doing your. You're like, you have no allegiances, right? You're totally neutral, but you can go do whatever you want in space land. That would have been way more interesting. Like it'd be like a Destiny where like there's a set mission. Not that Destiny does it great, but you know what I'm saying, where it's like a set missions and you go through it all and eventually beat it and then you can, hey, you can probably go back and do them on a harder difficulty or whatever. Um, but the the combat would have significantly improved if it was like something like that, right? You could have multiple party members and whatnot. I don't know. They, they were kind of... The, this is ter this game right now is like a weird amalgamation, like a combination of two different types of games. Um, it's really odd, and it's just like that MMO part is the part that sticks out, and it's just like, And the quality of the cutscenes has increased so much. Like, some of the cutscenes I've seen for this, like, just blow out everything they've ever done before in this game. Like, it's some good shit. See, they never used to, like... They never Centuries? used to take the time just to like settle out, out you know. You had to find the antique. Observation. Visible design elements do not match any from Zakulan culture, antique, or modern. Not from Zakul. Could it be? He doesn't overthink things. Ha <laughs> ha! Do you have any idea what this is? An ancient like starship. Kind of old spacecraft. This is the gravestone. This was the only ship that ever went up against the Eternal Fleet and won. Do you have any idea how long people have been looking for this thing? And we just happened to stumble upon it. You said this ship went up against the Eternal Fleet and won. But it's rusting in a swamp while the fleet is still around. The fleet is even older than Valkorian, maybe even older than Zakul. The battles happened centuries ago. Nobody knows the details of the whole war, but every story talks about the Gravestone. One ship with the firepower to take on the Eternal Fleet. This is fate. We get your Outlander. Find exactly the weapon we need. We're going to win this thing, Mana. It's destiny. It's certainly no coincidence, but destiny? I think there's something else going on here. Do you think this is some kind of setup? No, not exactly. I can't quite put my finger on it. Let's have a look inside, huh? Assessment. The Eternal Emperor. Nearby signs of animal activity suggest local predators may be using this wreck as a nesting ground. Caution is advised. We'll split up. Deal with any wildlife, then regroup. Of course, the we'll split up. Move. Of course, because you can't have more than two people. Hey, I, I don't, I don't want you to be my companion. I want the robot back. Is there a way to choose? See, now I have these guys as my companions. My other dudes are just fucking gone. Um, that plot point. I mean, she said she would explain what happened to them. I'm assuming they're all dead. Uh, which is cool. Whatever, man. But it's like weird things. Like, man, I, some of their stories I wish I could have seen to the end. Like, some of them were way more interesting than the others, for sure. Um, can I call? Okay, so they're not letting me call anyone. Alright. All 
day. Like, look at this. Like, yeah, there's just. Like, the story areas in this game were never as complex as any of this stuff, you know? They're usually just long hallways you would go down through. Move so good. <laughs> Robots keep in the tally. I wish uh, they like showed it better, like a little icon of them talking or something. Because it does seem to get drowned out by the combat sound. See if I could turn up the sound some more. Sound effects. So maybe that and that. Maybe a little of that. All right. Yeah, they seem to get drowned out a little bit by the combat noise, which is kind of annoying. I don't really don't want to miss them. Yeah, see, this is all kind of mindless. Like, I'm not trying super hard here. But yeah, if like you can have multiple party members and just go all the way with it, just make this fucking like a, a single player game. That'd be so fucking cool, like, I don't know. Everything's had unique art so far and all that, like no r real repeating structures like you would see in like the open world. Um, it's been pretty interesting so far. The endless swamp. After the damage you inflicted, they couldn't have made a safe landing anywhere else. And if they didn't make a safe landing? We'll know soon enough. Sky troopers sweep the area. Focus on regions with high metallic sensor readings. The, the knights are super cool. Like, ah, oh, so so good. I oversaw security in the Carbonite prison. I, I humbly submit myself to answer for this failure. Yep. Sister. I didn't like his answer. So this ship has been here for a thousand years? More? Right. It's amazing that it's in such good condition, considering. Judging by the damage I've seen, the stories are true. Whoever built the gravestone scuttled it themselves after the Eternal Fleet was defeated. It wasn't shot down. The fleet was defeated but not destroyed. Valkorion brought it back under his own control more than a century ago. Exactly. The Eternal Fleet is totally automated. Nobody knows who first built it. And every theory is crazier than the last. Renegades left behind after a hmm. successful droid revolution. Representatives of an entire race of droids from somewhere beyond the edge of the known galaxy. Like I said, crazy stuff. But no matter where it came from, the Eternal Fleet is practically unstoppable. 
and Arkin controls every single ship from the throne. Hmm. So the Eternal Fleet existed before the Emperor, like, grabbed it and put it all together. If Valkorion has had this unstoppable fleet for more than a century, why didn't he use it to help the Sith Empire defeat the Republic? We can only theorize. Uh, if the war was just part of a ritual to make the Emperor truly immortal, perhaps using the fleet would have interfered somehow. Regardless, we have many other things to discuss. I owe you five years worth of explanations. Yeah, about and that. I'm gonna need some parts to get this thing moving again. Locating supplies and fresh water would also be wise. Help I'll my help girl. We need, Lana. Very well. A session. I will begin a patrol pattern to ensure that no enemy forces report our position. I really like like just how this is all set up and all that. If Darth Arcus could see me now. If, like if Darth Arcus could see me. The now. only thing missing is just like straight I'm up just talking to your companions. And yo girl, I thought you were gonna tell me like literally everything that's happened. Run to run to run to run. So it looks like there's side quests out here. But I mean I guess I should do everything. Ooh. Boosted classic speeder bike brown. Sweet. Alright, yeah, I'll do that. Fuck it. Oh, you have to go way out there for some water. Alright. We got a power core. Maybe I'll finish up this chapter and maybe call it a video. But you, I mean, you can see what I'm saying. It's very, uh, it's built very differently. Of course, like, there's no other players and all that. Like, it's so weird, but I really dig it. I wish the rest of this, the story stuff before this was very, like, the Revan stuff was better, but the Hut Cartel stuff wasn't very good. It was very, uh, just kind of repeating the same thing, you know? It's like, oh, let's just make another MMO storyline. Like, no, like, just do the thing you are so good at. Um, and the sad thing is a lot of people won't even get to see this because it's, like, stuck behind the MMO. Even though all you have to do is pay 15 bucks, and then you're in it. You're going to fucking, you could just play the story mode. But it's not as good as, like, it would have been at, as, like, if you had, um, you know, you played all the story and you got to this point, you know how everything got this way. Uh, it'd be more like, oh, you're just some random dude in the newer one. If you were just like, skip straight to 60, I mean. And, like, all the zones, like, it's really weird, like, yeah, like, the zones tiny and pretty it's it's big as it needs to be you know that's what I felt like with some of the worlds in um, the MMO I mean it's because it's an MMO but it's like some of these areas don't need to be as big as they currently are like they are interesting in themselves if they were just like smaller areas oh, let's see that speeder bike. I don't know how to use vehicles Let's see. Vehicles. Yeah, I got a new I only got a new Carrillo, man. Fucking dope. Fucking dope. Alright. I don't know where I need to go. Apparently there's a tunnel here. Yeah, look at that. It's like the pr the problem when you're traveling in MMO is that there's so many enemies just everywhere usually, and they're just fucking hitting you every five seconds. And it's so annoying. 
and this like you're way more immersed and you're just kind of like yeah I'm just gonna roll through the swamp and get to where I need to go maybe run into an enemy maybe not I don't know it's like this is a story area is this girl gonna talk to me or what so it looks like this is an actual zone and see there's other players and stuff which story wise makes no sense but whatever story wise it would be like murdering them. It's like hey they can't give up position Did we build this, or was this already here? When Darth Maher and I faced Valkorion, we knew right away. He was the Sith Emperor, Lana. I know. When he was struck down, it released ripples through the Force. Everyone who had felt the Sith Emperor's presence in the past, on Zyost, on Yavin 4, we all sensed what had happened. Arkan invaded soon after, claiming that an outlander had assassinated his father, the immortal Emperor. It didn't take long for us to unravel the truth. Which side did Arkan attack first? Both. Ships from the Eternal Fleet struck at shipyards and rallying points for both sides simultaneously. They no favoritism. Throughout the war. Zakulan's sensor technology has far greater range than our own, and their ships can fly much further on less resources. Only vessels retrofitted with Isotope 5 could manage to outrun them. None could truly compete. So she's gonna give me a bit of story every time I fucking touch one of these. This is cool. It's like it's collect the thon quest, but makes it more interesting. We just dumping some story on me. This will help. Somewhat worthy opponent. Never stood a chance. Yeah, man, I want—I want to know what happened. Where my bros at? All right, so you're not gonna give me any. Oh, there we go. How long did the Republic and the Empire manage to hold out? Within three months, the bulk of our naval forces were disabled or eliminated, and the Republic was in the same situation. With naval superiority, Arkham's forces could begin choking off supply lines, trade any ship travel at all. The Eternal Fleet seemed to be everywhere at once. Coruscant and Drom and Kars were blockaded by the end of the first year. Hmm. And it's like, the story's super interesting because it basically changes the whole dynamic of the game. And it's kind of crazy when you think about it. But, I mean, I guess it'll help it be more story specific I'm assuming like my dudes are gonna come back or something I'm not sure it's so weird that they're still listed you know or maybe like certain ones of them will come back I'm not sure we got all these lightsabers The members of the Dark Council fought Arkans' invasion ruthlessly and lost. The Empire's treaty was ultimately negotiated by the Minister of Logistics. Chancellor Suresh also refused to discuss surrender, but the Republic Senate managed to overrule her. A cadre of senators negotiated their own ceasefire terms. All of those senators have since been disgraced or dismissed. I'm sure you can imagine the likely culprit. So far, the treaties with Zakul have held. But that will not last forever. I really wonder how like this is all gonna pan out. It's like, is everything gonna be back to normal? The like, same old shit. Once we uh, once I beat this expansion, I'm not sure. I hope this thing has an end. It's fucking goddamn well better.
Defeat another Rancor. Another fucking Rancor. Just chopping these things up. Why don't we just eat this thing? Boom, 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 boom. Oh man, it's just fucking me up. when you pull everything. Alright, actually had to use a cooldown or two there. Let's go, man. It's totally... way to get over there. There we go. Water. Hey, there's a lot of water. Speak to Lana. Oh, I probably have to get off. A freshwater spring. It should be safe for drinking. Both sides are forced to pay a heavy tribute to Zakul, mainly raw materials and resources. They're also held under an arms limitation statute. The Empire and the Republic are both breaking it, of course, but they're still incapable of challenging the throne directly. Who rules the Empire now? Darth Asina was the only Dark Council member left standing. All others died or disappeared in the chaos. Oh wow, they killed the whole Dark Without Council? Opposition, she declared herself Empress of the Sith. And the Republic? Suresh remains in power, though she no longer holds the title of Chancellor. The Republic has limits to their ruler's terms, but her replacement is a mere puppet. Both sides see this only as an opportunity to eliminate one another at a time of weakness, instead of combining what strength they have. Yep, sounds about right. Arkhan does nothing to prevent violence between them, so long as their tribute is paid and no one challenges Zakul's superiority. Asina cannot stand against me. Take me back <laughs> to the Empire, and I'll hold the throne in a matter of hours. Neither Empress Asina nor the Republic are our most pressing concern. We cannot make oh, use of those resources like yet. That. Powerful Zakulan battle stations have been placed in orbit around key worlds to watch for possible uprisings. But there are no ongoing planetary occupations. The ships of the Eternal Fleet simply patrol at random. While the tribute paid to Zakul gradually chokes all economic potential. What about my team? My ship? I have allies looking for them as we speak. With all of the chaos of the last few years, though, it will take time to find them all. For now, we make do with ourselves, Koth, and HK. You're all I need, here, baby. There's nothing we can't handle. The feeling's mutual. It truly is a relief to see you again. Is that why you went to so much trouble to rescue me? Before you were captured, you accomplished things no one else dared to attempt. You changed the galaxy more than once. And if things have ever needed to change, now is the time. But... There is something else. I've felt it since the moment I found you in Carbonite. There's a power in you. Something new. It's elusive. But I know it's there. I think you're right, Lana. I think the Emperor Valkorian is in my mind. What? Mm -hmm. After he died, there was a storm of energy. I barely even remember being thrown into the carbon freezing chamber. And then, while I was frozen, I saw things, dreamed about him, about everything that happened while I was gone. 
It can't be. If he were controlling you, I'd know it. I certainly saw enough of it on Zios. This is I different. don't think he's trying to control me. Well, not directly, anyway. He was trying to convince me to work with him. Whatever he's doing, we can be sure that he's always trying to deceive us somehow. I believe in you. And I appreciate your honesty. I'll remain watchful for any influence he might have over you. I wonder how much that would change. Over, we have no choice but to proceed. Hmm. What about the others? They wouldn't understand. And like you said, we really don't know anything for sure yet. Let's keep the matter between us for now. It's like big, long cutscenes like this that are all dialogue and choices. It wasn't really in the original MMO. This is, feels more like, you know, KOTOR. Oh, look. Oh. It is a pleasure to see you again so soon, Masters. I have encountered minimal resistance in my patrol. How minimal? <laughs> Reassurance. Only one Sky Trooper and three local predators with poor survival instincts. Our position appears to be secure at this time, but I would still advise caution on your return trip, Masters. Thank you. Get back to it. Keep up the good work, HK. Appreciation. It will be my pleasure to do so, Master. I like that guy. He's my husband, though. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, let's finish off this chapter. Why not? Quick travel back to the gravestone. One of those is like you can be your main base of operations for now or something. Let's see. The gravestone. Hey there. Did you find something tasty? We definitely found something. Great. Oh, he said something about parts. How does he want me to go out there and find parts, really? Oof, you're such an MMO right now. Alright. Well, I guess you have to do both no matter what. And he kind of just fills out some of the backstory. But I think we're going to end it on that note. Uh, thank you for watching if you did. Oh yeah, this is a really interesting thing. Um... Yeah, I really like how this is built. Uh, the only problem is that part where it's still in the MMO formula of like hotkeys and pets and companion stuff and whatever. Uh, but it's built really well and it's only 15 bucks. And you get all the expansions to play. But, well, this has been Adrian from my channel Random Drop. And I will see you next time. Let's see, slash, goodbye. It's been a pleasure. Been a pleasure, motherfucker. Meatbags!